I have leaked footage. I'm sorry. What was that, Steve? I have leaked footage. I can only imagine Shannon Gray's face when he heard this come out of Steve's mouth, guys. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Now before we get started, I just want to leave this disclaimer out there because this will be the only one and I will probably have to start putting this at the beginning of every video, but disclaimer, what's going to be discussed in this video are my opinions and my opinions alone. Opinions are not facts. Everything in this entire situation is alleged. Okay, let's continue. Yeah, we're going to talk about these statements here. Now, some of them I think some people are taking out of context. And some of them I think Steve is trying to make seem more valid and more important than they actually, than it actually is. Okay, we're going to get to that, that little portion of this at the very end. But first off, let's just go ahead and play this one. Because this one is probably the most important. I have leaked footage leaked footage okay but is this actual footage that is being considered admissible footage in court or is this linda lane footage because they're not the same thing i have i've seen things that they may have not seen i know for a fact the path that this uh white salon this this car took now it sounds to me like he was about to misspeak and say cilantro which I would just assume is him mixing up words in his head because there's no such thing as a cilantro. Okay. There's a sonata. There's a, I think a Solara. And then of course we have the Elantra. Now I know that a lot of people took that and were kind of like running with it, saying that it was some sort of whatever. And I mean, it, it could be, you know, one of those, what do they call them? Freudian slips, right? It could be, especially since we have the body cam footage from whenever Brian Koberger was pulled over by that WSU traffic cop. And whenever she was getting the dispatch information back from giving the dispatch officer of the license plate, the car came back as a different thing. It didn't come back as an Elantra. I think it actually did come back as a Sonata. I could be wrong on that, but I know for a fact that what was read to the, the officer from dispatch was not an Elantra and everyone caught on to that. And so it caught everyone's attention. And it's just crazy to me because the car has been such a huge issue in itself. The car alone is its entire chaotic dumpster fire. I honestly think it was just a mistake and he caught himself and it was an innocent one at that. But again, I could be wrong. There might be something else he knows that we don't. People are going to wonder what he was doing when he parks in certain locations for extended amount of time. What was he looking at? What windows was he pe peering into? Why did he pick that location to stop at? Why did he keep going back to these certain locations? I just know of the day that this happened of, in the footage that was given to me. From the footage that was given to you. And see, News Nation never talked about the Linda Lane stuff. Ever. None of the big mainstream media companies talked about Linda Lane whatsoever. So whenever Steve is sitting here talking about this footage that was leaked, like there's no way in hell that everyone, Ashley Banfield and Brian Itton included, don't know about Linda Lane and don't know all of the drama coming from Linda Lane because I'm telling you, they know everything out in the internet, okay? So for him to just talk to News Nation like, oh, you're just talking about the, this footage is no big deal. It's kind of weird to me because honestly, just people that follow this case on the internet, like get an idea about what he's actually talking about. If you're just somebody who watches TV and gets the news and watches the documentaries that were being made and you're not getting on Twitter, if you're not getting on TikTok, if you're not getting on Facebook, if you're not getting on YouTube, you know crap about the Linda Lane footage. So whenever he sits there, he's like, I know the exact path that this car took. Okay, you might know a path that the car took in whatever footage that you're looking at. But from what we're understanding, there's nothing that can confirm Brian Koberger is in that car, nor that that car is Brian Koberger's in the footage. No plates can be read. No profiles can actually be determined. No faces inside the vehicle can actually be determined. No, nothing specific on the vehicle is being 
told or talked about. And that was one of my biggest things in the PCA is that they claim that they have, you know, all these recordings, all these ring cameras and all these traffic cams. And again, they never released a still shot of the vehicle whatsoever. The one from the gas station that Brian Inton came out and told us about was never verified by the cops. And to me, they would be looking for like a WSU parking permit sticker or something like that, right? Like there would be some sort of insignia of WSU on that car that would sort of prove really that it was Brian's actual, or at least more likely prove that it was more likely Brian's actual Elantra. But none of that was ever showed to us. And so for Steve to sit here and say, oh, I know the exact path that the car took because of this stuff that was leaked to me. Well, unless there's an actual investigator at one of those three levels that he claims are all arguing with each other about stuff, okay? Unless someone in, in, in those areas has actually went against the gag order and leaked true admissible evidence to Steve, then all that Steve is talking about in this segment is Linda Lane. It could not possibly be anything else. Unless we are going to now have some sort of internal investigation happen into a gag order that was just violated based off of this interview. Actually, that's probably going on right now as we speak. I've been told 100% the amount of stuff we have, Steve, relax. People have reached out to me and some of those people have just said that if, if, if what I know is accurate, Steve, there's a massive amount of information. Okay. This is the statement where I said, I think Steve is trying to make it sound more valid and more important than it actually is. Okay. Now I'll have the link. If you haven't seen this interview already, or if you want to re-listen to this part again, I'll have the link for the interview in the description box as always. But she is asking him about, okay, you say whenever you get like word that they're confident that they have everything they need and that's why they're not worried about the house. Okay. Is that coming from like a victim's liaison, a victim's advocate, or is that coming from somebody actually in the investigation? Well, his response is more like, well, because I'm really vocal, people reached out to me and said, you know, based off what we know so far, you have nothing to worry about. Okay. Well, all that tells me is that his little YouTube friend that he likes to take pictures with and people that are on the Facebook group and people that are, you know, talking to the family and trying to comfort them are telling Steve, Hey, if everything that we know is legit, you have nothing to worry about. There should not be anyone giving the family any information. And as much as the police, or at least it seemed as if the police were not happy with the fact that the consolvices were coming out and giving tidbits of information in the beginning, I don't think that they're going to be giving them or any of the families really any information like this. Like they're not going to be handing them over footage. So this is, this is a prime example. This interview, I, this interview was a prime example for why as, as much as I, I do like the fact that the consolvices are not letting this just like be quiet and they're out here making sure that nobody forgets that this is still an issue that needs to be, you know, solved and resolved and all the things he really should just be talking through his lawyer. Because there's no way that Shannon Gray heard this entire interview and didn't know that he had to start instantly doing damage control. There's probably all kinds of phone calls and all kinds of things now being investigated because the feds are now looking at Moscow and who, other, who else knows what other agencies are involved in this looking for an actual leak because of what Steve just said here. These are examples of why they need to stay off of the media. But also Ashley Banfield kind of knew what she was doing whenever she asked that question. So I think that she prodded it and asked it the way that she did because she was trying to get, I don't know if she was trying to like validate that it was the police that was giving Steve information or if she was trying to get him to clarify that it's not an actual leak, that it was something else. Because like I said, there's no way that mainstream media, even though they haven't spoken about all this Linda Lane stuff, there's no way that they don't know. And I think that in the back of her mind, in my opinion, she knew that that was what Steve was talking about. And the people that are involved in that leak and all the Linda Lane stuff is most likely who is telling him and comforting him in all of this. Now, I know the prosecution is probably being pretty confident in front of the families. I don't see why they wouldn't be. So, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Bill Thompson was like, you know, Mr. Gonsalves, we got this. We have everything we need and we're completely confident. I understand that. But whenever you're mixing that statement on top of saying, oh, I have leaked footage, you're treading, you're treading in rough water. Okay. I don't even know another way to say that you're, you're just doing something that's not safe for the investigation. And I mean, seriously, 
are they asking for like a mistrial? Are they asking for something to go wrong here? Because for him to come out and just tell the entire world, oh, I have leaked footage. And the people that basically leaked me this footage are telling me we have nothing to worry about. That is all of the gag orders being violated at one time. In my opinion, massive, massive gag order violation. So he's going to either have to come out and retract that statement and actually validate and verify who's telling him this information and what footage he's actually talking about that he has seen and calling leaked footage, or there's going to be an internal investigation that could cause problems here. They told us that ideal jury member was someone who had thousands of acres and had no time to watch TV. He was out on the farm. Well, I don't feel like that kind of guy is going to see the footage that I seen and not want to understand what was going on in the house in a computer program is going to mean nothing to that farmer. Okay, this statement bothers me for multiple reasons. Okay, one of the reasons being that they basically want someone who is completely just, you know, internet free. And they're basically saying that if you're some farmer out there plowing the fields, that you're just like not inept to technology and you're not going to understand it is kind of like the vibe that I'm getting. But that's really a problem. You know why that's a problem? It's a huge problem. If the Consolas family is actually being told that the perfect juror is someone who doesn't understand technology the way that they should, which is the basics, you know, that I'm getting from that statement because of how much technology is involved in this case. And his next statement makes this statement even more ridiculous. <laughs> and I mean, let me just go ahead and play it. There's a whole nother level of data being collected on people. Some of that will come out in this case. There's a whole nother level of data being collected on people. And it's going to come out in this case. Okay. That means that there is going to be some tracking methods maybe brought out at trial that maybe we didn't know existed, or maybe we didn't know the extents of possibly. That statement's very strange, which, which, which is what I'm talking about. So you're telling me that you're being told that the ideal juror is someone who is technologically inept, <laughs> but that literally this case is going to be based on technology that most of us have never even heard of before when it comes to the way that data on humans is collected on a day-to-day. -day. So does that not sound like the opposite? Why would they say that the perfect juror doesn't understand technology, basically? Again, that's just my opinion on what he's, you know, coming out and claiming right now. But then this entire case is going to be like, up here when it comes to the amount of technology and new technology and in-depth technology, but they want someone who's down here when it comes to understanding all of that. And that's just a shady statement. When you think about it in that context, it's almost as if they want someone who's not going to understand the bullshit that's getting put in front of them so that they can get the verdict that they want because the person just doesn't understand it enough to really make a decision. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that statement. But I guess that's it, you guys. What do you think he's talking about when it comes to this leaked footage? Do you think he's actually been given admissible evidence footage to look at from the actual investigators? Or is he talking about Linda Lane and making it sound as if it's legit? Is he actually getting information from investigators telling them that they're confident in the case? Or is this just people that he talks to on the internet going ahead and trying to make him feel more comfortable about the situation? Like I said, some of those statements, I feel like they were being said just to make them feel and sound more verified and valid when they maybe don't mean so much. But again, that's just my opinion. But now it's time for me to hear yours. If you liked this video, please do not forget to leave a like on the way out. Subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. See y'all.